do you start? Where does it come from, right, when you start on a project? Uh -huh. That's such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, that's a very, very, very good question. I think the, um, you know, as a designer, well, you begin, I think design for theater is a collaborative art. So I think, in fact, you begin to draw your resources from all of the various um, participants in a project. So it, it sort of depends on what the project is. So. Um, you know, if, you, if you're working in opera, you have many levels that where you you begin to kind of draw your inspiration from. So it could be the music, which has its own emotional weight, but there's also the story. Um, and then there are other factors that play into that, which is when the piece was written and how the audience, of course, is going to perce will, will perceive the production now. You know, you're interpreting something that was written in the, could have been written in the 18th century written for a completely different audience than our audience now, um, written for, you know, maybe written for a, as a chamber orchestra and would have been seen by a very select group of people, whereas now it's being performed in a much bigger house for a, a completely different group of people who, who would have a completely different response to the piece. Um, so, so, so how does that affect how, if you're dealing with that opera which is received by you know, it's a rich audience that way. How do you adjust or how do you take into consideration that your audience has just come in off uh, iPods and, uh, right. and cell phones? Well, that's exactly it. I think that's you have these various factors that you kind of take into consideration when you're looking at the, each specific piece. So, you know, you know, to state more factors in what, in, what, what influenced the design, because I think I'm very much a believer that set design is uh, part of the design world, um, design arts. You know, you, there are certain factors that affect the shape of what the design will be. So, um, and you're, and I think your job as a designer is to sort of call all of those, to sort of to find out what all the factors are and then digest them. So. Um, you know, a part of that might be what, you know, this opera was written for a specific group of people in a specific time, and we're performing now, how do I put across the ideas of the piece to the audience now, as they would have been understood in the 18th century? Um, what is the, what is the intention of the piece? And I always think that one of the main roles that I have as a designer and the collaboration that I, the, 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 my, my collaboration with the director is to try to find out why a piece was written and what was the intention behind the piece and, um, and, and, and try to bring that to light in some way. Um, so if you took the ring, right, you not only directed but you designed it uh -huh, for the yeah. ring. So how Wagner wrote it for what and then how do you take that and reform it? <laughs> the ring. Do you have... Twelve hours. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we just start, keep rolling. Yeah. Start, or maybe I, something smaller. Maybe the magic flute. No, no. I can talk about the ring. I think okay. the ring is very interesting, because the ring, you know, was written. There's sort of very many levels that the ring can be understood on. Wagner wrote the ring as a reaction in the mid. He wrote it in the middle of the nineteenth century, almost as a reaction to the beginning of the industrial revolution. And, you know, it's set in a land of gods and humans and mythology, but ultimately the story is about greed underneath all of it. Um, and so when you dig and you dig into these Wagner pieces, there's usually underneath the kind of quite elaborate exterior, I find that there are, uh, in the, at the center of them are quite human emotions and, and um, uh, and, 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 and very strong sort of psychological impulses which drive the characters through the operas. Um, and the ring cycle is ultimately about greed. It's about what happens to people when they come in contact with the gold of the, of the opera. And that's what drives the whole piece. Everybody becomes eventually corrupted by the gold, which starts off at the beginning in the first opera, the beginning of the 12 hours, is it just a beautiful, innocent, 
play toy for these Rhine maidens. They don't really care about the gold. They're just protecting it. They, and that's why it gets stolen from them because they have no, it has no value to them. And then it's stolen and through the rest of the 12 operas it becomes sort of corrupted as, you know, as, as um, everyone tries to get a hold of the gold. So, so once you sort of begin to kind of discover that, then you can begin to, you know, to, to explore the idea of greed. And with a shape, with a texture, with a color, with a metaphor? What does greed mean in our, in our society? What is, what is envy? What is, what is greed? What do, what do, you know, then you begin to kind of understand the characters through their relationship to greed and to the greed and this desperation for the gold. Um, and, and for me, that's the beginning of the understanding of how to build a design, is to understand what, um, what the characters are, what motivates the characters, and then you can begin to build out of that a kind of design that allows them to live within, um, if that makes sense. It does, but do you mean a space? A theatrical space, or a imaginative space, or a metaphorical space. Or well, it can be all of those. It can be a, actually a physical space, and but in a way, I quite like uh, to come from um, a place where people are doing things. Um, so, in a sense, you have to find out what do people, what what are they doing first? What you know, what makes them tick and what are they doing and then you can begin to understand okay so we need a table or we need a two chairs and a table and then you think well then it would be quite nice to have a wall you know if or does it want to be a room does it want to be a physical room around them um, is that the best way to express that moment of what is taking place in the scene and sometimes you don't need that maybe there's enough said in the narrative of the piece that you actually don't need to give an extra layer of narrative and explaining where the piece takes place. Audiences now are incredibly um, image savvy, um, mm -hmm. so you don't need to give all of that much to an audience before they 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 can read um, images quite cl clearly and they understand this kind of mixture of sound and imagery together, so that actually you can. You can give very little in, in abstract terms and people will know a sense of space without giving a whole sense of space. You don't have to do that. Um, you're, you're in a way describing the, the, the motion of a director when you talk about space, people, what they want, what yeah, they do. I think they're completely, do I need a wall? That's it's a, completely interconnected. Picking. Yeah, I think they're connected. I don't think there's... And that to me is what the collaborator collaborative spirit of theater is all about because I think that's what's exciting when you have you know you have um, it's a, a directorial idea where it meets a design idea and a design idea where it meets a directorial idea and then the two and for me that's the best theater where you have no idea where the two where one begins and the other one ends um, so I so when you work with a director then you you get them to talk I mean, how do you hear their... <laughs> It'd be nice sometimes. Sometimes, if yes, can, sometimes. If they can talk, that would be great. No, 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 most of the time it's really nice. No, you Are there directors them. who can't talk? Well, actually, it's, it's a very... For a lot of directors who have come from an acting background or who've come from a literary background, it's, it's, it's quite daunting to them, the visual world. The, uh, the, even though theater is a visual uh, medium, it's quite daunting that, that the, the, they don't have the language right. that, in which to discuss that. Um, you know, I, uh, there's a certain language you develop over a period of time as a designer or, you know, just by being immersed in the visual arts. So you have references that you can draw on. Sometimes a director doesn't have that, so they're, they're looking to you for that. Um, and that's where the exchange takes place. So they, they bring something to the table, and you bring something to the table, and then you play back and, back and forth. Um, and, and, and I'm very interested in, 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 in collaboration, I think. Um, I, and think in I think that is the key to you know, working in the theater. Otherwise, you'd be a painter in a room on your own with a white canvas, and 
you know, doing what you do and kind of making poetic things which are an expression of who you are. But in fact, this is an expression of many people coming together in order to create specific, a specific series of moments pieced together. 